I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms have destroyed this body, Yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave, the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We welcome you this morning to the homegoing celebration for Sister Juanita Frazier Dixon. Reverend Jennifer Jones will come and share with us our scripture reading. Our Old Testament reading is the 23rd number of Psalms. It reads thusly. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. They comfort me. Thou prepareth the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. 
Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our New Testament reading comes from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter, verses 51 through 57. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on mortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to the pass, saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which give us us the victory, our Lord Jesus Christ, the word of the Lord. Would all except the family please stand and join in singing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. And Reverend Gloria Johnson will lead us in prayer.
Let us pray. Oh God, our Father, it's in thy presence, in thy sight. Oh God, that we call upon your holy and your righteous name. Father, we call on you in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. And Father, we just want to, to thank you, God. Father, for we're reminded that this is still the day that you have made. And Lord God, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, even though we come at a very difficult time, Father God, we know that you're able, dear God, to meet the needs of your people this morning. Father, we just come, Father God, just asking that you would just allow your Holy Spirit to move throughout this family this morning, throughout this service this morning, for everything that we will do, dear God, to, to bring comfort to this family. God, we know the times are difficult, but God, we just thank you that you have made provision for such a time as this. God, you are the God of all comfort. And God, we ask this morning that you would comfort this family with the power of your holy presence. Father, we pray that you would just touch this, this husband, dear God, of 52 years. Father, for these sons, dear God, the grandchildren, the sisters, the brothers, oh God, touch them all in the name of Jesus. All of the family and friends and relations, dear God, who knew Sister Juanita. Oh God, we know that Sister Juanita is all right. For God made provision a long time ago, and she accepted the plan of salvation. And God, we thank you, God, that she didn't just accept the plan, but God, she served you, dear God, as long as she possibly could. But God, we just thank you so much, oh God, that prepared for preparing a place for Juanita and for all who love the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh God, for Jesus said himself that he was going to us, that where he is, we might be also. And thank you, dear God, that we trust in your word, for your word is all that we have. And God, we come just leaning and depending on your holy and your righteous word. This morning, God, just do what only you can do in this service, dear God, and prepare us all, dear God, to know that we must pass this way. Oh, we're here for a, a, a little while, but soon, oh God, sooner than many of us can imagine, we will be called to that place that you have prepared for us. So God, as we continue in this service, we ask that you would just have your way. Have your way, God. You promise, oh God, that the weeping that we have right now, oh God, it will endure for a while. But God, it won't last always, dear God. For many of us have experienced these very things, oh God. And we know, dear God, that you will make a way for us, God. And you will make us better and stronger, dear God, and as we live each and every day. And God, that we would plant our feet in such a way that we will be determined to, to manifest your presence in our lives. And God, I just pray in Jesus' name, oh God, that you will just anoint the pastor as he comes to bring word to today and lord may they help us oh god as we carry on from day to day oh god we thank you we praise you father we thank you for this life oh god we thank you that it was a life of meaning and purpose oh god thank you god keep us oh god help us oh god to be the lights that you have called us to be. And God, may we continue to give you the praise, to give you all the glory, and to give you all the honor in the mighty name of your son, Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. This prayer
and we pray in his name. Amen.
trying times. But we will get over it. Juanita Dixon, a true educator who believed that every child, every student could learn while she was at McKinley High School, it was one of the greatest and the largest high schools in the state of Louisiana. She worked hard to make sure the students perform to, best, to the best of their ability. She took her students one day, well, it lasts several days. She took her students to Washington, D.C. with her students to see the inauguration of the President of the United States. Very few of her students were suspended. If she had a petition with the students, then she called the parents, and the parents took care of it. She worked, one of, she worked under one of the greatest principals I know, Charlie Thomas. She did whatever it took to make a child, a student, whatever you want to call it, graduate and have all the success that they could have in the future. I learned from her that it takes a village to educate a child. The only thing I want to say at the last minute is this. Thank you for sharing her with us we enjoyed it, and I know it's hard on you all right now, but we will get through it. Thank you. on the dais, visiting friends and family. This, to me, is a challenge. It's an honor. It's a privilege, and it's a pleasure. When I was asked, would I speak words on behalf of the family? And uh, as I was reading the program, and looked at the obituary, I said, only a fam family member and a spouse could summarize the life of Juanita so accurately. Now, Juanita, as we all know, came from a large family. It was 13 siblings and two grandchildren raised under the same roof. And we all created, cultivated, and believed in the same values because they were imparted to us by both parents when you got big enough to hear words of instruction. When one child was reprimanded or disciplined, it wasn't for that person alone, but the reprimand was for every child because it was the same thing you and I can tell you this much too you know uh, they both parent were very loving very caring but when necessary 
they believed in the adage, if you spare the rod, you spoil the child. And uh, they practiced Proverbs 22, 6. Train up a child when it is young, and when it get old, it will not depart from it. And our training began at a very, very early age. Religion, we went to Sunday school each Sunday. Church was once a month. Prayer meeting was every Wednesday. And covenant speaking was the Friday night before the second Sunday. We oftentimes left about me and some of my brothers. We knew each brother, each deacon. We could recite their prayer just as good as they could. We could speak each mother's covenant or each deacon's covenant just as well as he could. That was because we heard it, you know, it was repetitious, but we realized that it all has meaning. And I tell you now, as we go through life, and we used to hear those knee bent and body bowed prayers, Lord, thank you for letting me wake up in my right mind. And when I witness so much Alzheimer's and dementia today, I say I know what was meant now about waking up and being clothed in your right mind. Many people have physical health, but mental health has kissed their home goodbye. Now, Juanita, uh, getting back, and we're not going to talk long. Brevity is the watchword because I could speak a long time and all family members, uh, you could attest to what I'm saying is true. She was a very soft-spoken, kind, and humane person. I guess being kind of sandwiched, she was the seventh child, I was the sixth child, and there was a sister behind her, Belvy, the eighth child. And I guess we were so verbal that she had to kind of tone things down <laughs> to keep us <laughs> kind of in check, you know, but uh, she did. She was very resourceful, too. We all, and growing up out in rural Tinsaw Parish, we learned to improvise and play, but we were taught and we were kept in the yard. Uh, we were allowed to visit, but school was our main source of socialization and time of socialization away from the house. And uh, we enjoyed it. She went on through school. She came on to Southern University, and uh, I was listening to uh, Principal Brown, is, uh, who said that uh, she had believed and believed in that it took a whole village to educate a child. And we did the things, as because I'm a former educator, that we could do to reach our students. You know, we remember that there were teachers in our lives who impacted our education and who made way and provided for us. And we were encouraged to seek as much academic success as we possibly could. And uh, you know, I'm gonna say this and then I'm gonna close. Uh, I say we were taught to be humane and resourceful and always carry yourself with a lot of dignity and self-respect and pride. And I know that those of you who were living near Juanita who worked with her, a witness to her at church, I just say, uh, I was thinking and I was uh, kind of laughed to myself. I said, when we were at home playing and on the turn row and in the yard, her first automobile was a used car tire, but I said, God blessed her to the point that before she left this world, her last car was an imported Jaguar. Thank you. Good morning. Brother Donald, it was, I, I giggled a little bit when you said that Ms. Dixon was soft-spoken. Because as a student, I guess that she, 
she took everything that she couldn't give to all you guys and she brought it to the classroom. Um, and, and Brother Brown, she, she definitely believed that it, it took a village and there, there would be no representative James if Ted James had an encounter with Juanita Dixon at McKinley Senior High School. And uh, we, I, I tried to um, convey my, uh, my thoughts about Ms. Dixon and this resolution um, that I'm gonna try to read to you guys today. An expression of condolences to the family of Juanita Fraser Dixon. Whereas it is with deep regret and profound sorrow that I, Representative James, have learned of the death of a remarkable woman, a dedicated educator and one of Louisiana's brightest lights on December 7th, 2020. And whereas she embraced her life's passion of teaching and reminded and, 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 was, and remained an educator in East Baton Rouge Parish school system for 35 years. Whereas a social studies teacher, she sponsored several trips to Washington and New York City and led a close-up trip to the presidential inauguration of President Barack Obama. And whereas two of the most memorable lessons she taught were focused on conveying that there is a difference between remembering and learning, and how in school you are given lessons to prepare for a test, but in life you are tested, and then you learn a lesson. Her students appreciated her approach and valued her wisdom because she was able to look at them and understand their various backgrounds and still find a way to influence, encourage, and enhance their educational experience. Her students fondly remembered her as a teacher who taught them leadership and self-worth, and she consistently asked them, me included, to show them their grades even when they were in college to ensure that they were on the path to success. And whereas Juanita was an effective teacher who had an enriching effect on the day-to-day -day lives of her children and taught them the value of lifelong education. She was a tireless advocate and mentor for her students. She had an unwavering desire to assist all of her students in realizing their potential. She embodied the belief that you don't teach curriculum you teach human beings. And she imparted wisdom and still philosophies in her students that left lasting impressions. She gave selfless to her family and cherished every moment she had with them. And when you encountered her infectious spirit, you knew that you had encountered an amazing individual with a beautiful spirit and a kind heart. She was an astonishing combination of intelligence, perseverance, strength, humanity and compassion. Whereas Juanita was a friend to many people and embraced and accepted them and they accepted her as family. Her loving spirit, gentle soul, ambitious mindset radiated throughout her work and her legacy shall forever live in the hearts and minds of all of the individuals that she touched. Therefore, I, Edward Ted James, do hereby extend my deepest and profound condolences to the family and friends of Juanita Frazier Dixon for their loss, and do hereby wish to recognize and record her service to the community and to the state of Louisiana as an exemplary woman, an effective educator, and do hereby pay tribute to her for the effective way in which she dedicated her talent and her energy to her students. Um, I have affixed the, great, the seal of the great state of Louisiana and signed on this the 19th day of December 2020. Thank you. Good morning. Give an honor to God. Jesus Christ, our empowering Holy Spirit, until this pastor, Dr. Smith, and the ministers of the gospel that set up here, Dr. Bill Berry, and all of you, the Dixon family and Frazier family, I come also with a heavy heart. But I, I've read the obituary 
and I listen, listen to testimonies. And I, I saw the name more needed. The first one was baptized in 1959. And I got to thinking. I saw something in Hebrews that it really resonated with me. May I read it to you now? If you just bear with me for a second, it's not a sermon. <laughs> I dare not do that. For God is not, this is the sixth chapter, verses 10, 11, and 12. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed toward his name, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. And then that you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherited the promises. I didn't hear anything about her that gave any indication of slowfulness. When I was a little boy and growing up in a church down the street, I remember the deacons, as I heard one of the family members said. But my brother and I got in a conversation. Let me show you what people can do now. And he asked me, you remember that deacon that used to wave his hands and all when he started praying? And for the life of us, we couldn't remember his name. We remember what he did. But we couldn't remember his name. And you remember the lady that used to shout and run from the front to the back? And everybody chased after her? What was her name? We remember what she did, but not her name. But here's the contrast I'm trying to draw you to. If you listen carefully, for God is not unrighteous to forget what's written in this paragraph from the time that she was baptized until where it ends is recorded in glory, and God has not forgotten that. Now, in years to come, people might be struggling to remember this day. But the Lord remember everything. He remembers everything. All that we said, all we've done in his name, he remembers your labor of love for him, for his word, for the saints, every soul you've touched, every action and deed that you've done for his glory, the Lord will remember them all. And this is what the, the legacy should be about. Men will forget, but the Lord will never forget. Men may not care after tomorrow, but the Lord always care. Because I know he's the God of all comfort. I know precious in, the, in his sight is the death of his saints. I know all of that, but I also know that I am so glad that her name and my name and all of you who believe names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And it's there for eternity. God will never forget. God bless you. Let us all say amen together. We are so grateful for everyone who has taken the time to come and share with you this family, those who have shared in this worship experience, and certainly we honor Dr. Jesse B. Bilberry, Pastor Emeritus of the Mount Pilgrim Baptist Church for being present with us as well. For every kindness that has been shown for florals, for phone calls, for food gifts, for whatever you have done to show your love and your concern on behalf of of the family of Sister Dixon, we say thank you very much. At a later time, in a more personal way, the family will thank you individually. But for now, please allow our thanks on their behalf to be sufficient. It now becomes our responsibility to say some word that we pray would be of comfort and encouragement to these who have gathered 
we would like to call your attention to a very familiar passage of scripture found in the 14th chapter of John's Revelation and the 13th verse. And it reads this way, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. And we would invite you to think with us about that simple word, rest, rest. Our faith teaches us that the eternal spirit and image of God within us is not destroyed with the death of the body. In fact, God calls the dead blessed, which literally means happy, to be congratulated, fortunate. God tells us through John that those who die in the Lord are not to be pitied, but envied. Why? Because from now on, they rest. They rest from their hard work. And none of what they have done is wasted. For the Christian, death is not an end, but simply an entrance into a more marvelous life. For those who know Jesus as their personal savior, death is a blessed and fortunate experience because it serves as the doorway to eternal rest. So when death came for Sister Dixon, it served as a doorway to rest and to reward and to resurrection. Life is often hard. It is often full of difficulty and disappointment. We all know that life can be treacherous, full of terror and struggle and sickness and pain, full of trial and tribulation, full of danger, toil, and snare. And it's easy to grow weary from the struggle and long for rest and relief. But John says that death for the Christian provides rest from our labors. Rest, it's a beautiful word. It, it means to be at ease. Rest, it means to be refreshed. Rest, it means an end of toil and tribulation in life. This is what Jesus promised when he said, Come to me all that are weak and are heavily burdened, and I will give you rest. In this world of trouble, we can know rest for a little while. But when we leave this world, if we know Jesus for ourselves, there is a greater rest. There is a more complete rest when we go to be with the Lord. And those such as Sister Dixon who have laid their burden down and entered into it are to be congratulated. They are to be commended. John says death for the Christian is a doorway to reward. He says none of what they have done is wasted. You know, all of us are making a record here on earth. And John tells us that we carry the record of our life with us into eternity by the lives we live, by the words that we say, by the deeds that we do, we are laying up for ourselves treasure in heaven. Jesus said in Matthew 10 that if you give a cup of cold water to a little child because you are his disciple, you will in no way lose your Reward. Hebrews 6 reminds us that God will not forget the labors of love that we have done in his name as we minister to others. All these things are a part of the permanent record that we carry 
with us into eternity. This is a fundamental difference between the Christian and the world. The worldly person is only concerned about what he can get out of life. But the Christian knows that the greater value is not found in what you can take out of it, but it is found in what you can contribute to it to make it better for others. Juanita Dixon didn't take a whole lot of things out of this world. No money, not a whole lot of fame, no power, no prestige, but she left a lot for others to benefit from. She left a legacy of dedicated service to her church, to her children, to her students, to her community. She left a living testimony of how to walk with God under all conditions, not just in the sunshine, but also in the rain. We may grieve her passing out of this life and into the next. It's human to do that, but we can also celebrate those who have left more in the world than they took out of the world. We all leave something. Our, our record is here, good or bad. Our record remains long after we have gone, but while we leave our record behind, we also take it with us. Our works, the scripture says, follows us. Our works accompany us to the very presence of God. And when we come into his presence, when we see him as he is, we are blessed. John says that death for the Christian is the doorway to resurrection. And while our resurrection is not mentioned in this verse, Paul does affirm it in 1 Corinthians 15 and verses 20 through 22. Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam, all die. So in Christ, all are made alive. Jesus shared this word with Martha when he came to see about Lazarus. He said, I am the resurrection and I am life. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And then he said this, whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. This is death from God's point of view. But I remind you that, that this resurrected life doesn't belong to everybody. It only belongs to those who die in the Lord. It's only as we accept his salvation and submit to his lordship that death can be a blessed experience in our lives. When we have Jesus as our savior, death becomes a blessing. It's a doorway to rest and to reward and to resurrection. It's what Sister Dixon enjoys right now. She's at rest in the presence of the Lord. The hymn writer put it this way. He says, if I walk in the pathway of duty, if I work till the close of the day, I shall see the great king in his beauty. When, when I've gone the last mile, of the way. When I've gone the last mile of the way, there is rest at the close of the day. And I know there's joy that awaits me when I've gone the last mile of the way. Minister Patsy Wilkerson will come with our closing prayer. Let us pray.
Father, you, you said in your word, oh God, that you would keep in perfect peace those whose minds are stayed on you because we trust in you. Father, as we close this homegoing service and celebration today, oh God, for we need a Dixon, oh God, we, we come, oh God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, first of all, so, to say thank you. Thank you, oh God, for your peace that surpasses all understanding, oh God. We thank you for every song, every prayer, every word of comfort, oh God. We thank you for the eulogy, oh God, every resolution, oh God, all to benefit and to comfort. This family, oh God, we, we thank you for your amazing grace, oh God, we thank you Father, for your precious Holy Spirit that we have sensed in this place today, oh God, and we, oh God, just ask that you would continue to come alongside this family, oh God, and comfort them, oh God, and stand up on the inside of them, oh God, when they get weak, oh God, because, oh God, we know that in the next few days and the next few weeks and the next few months, oh God, it's, it's going to get difficult, oh God, but we thank you, oh God, that all they need to do, oh God, is but look to the hills from where their help comes from, oh God, and fix their eyes on you, oh God, and strength. Oh, God, and comfort will come on the inside of them, oh, God, when, when, when they can't speak any longer. Oh, God, speak for them. Oh, God, every tear that they cry, oh, God, be with them. Because, Father, we've learned that the tears are the hard words that we can't say. Oh, God, but we just give you praise. Father, we give you honor. And, Father, we ask that you would continue to comfort them and strengthen them and care for them, oh God. And, oh God, we know that you would never leave them to a place where your strength and your grace can't keep them, Father. So now, dear Father, we ask that you would give peace, give comfort, and care for this family. Father, love them. Hold them up, oh God, with your everlasting and unfailing love. And, Father, we just pray, oh God, that as Juanita comes home to you, that you would shower her, oh God, with your eternal love. And Father, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we thank you for her life. And thank you, oh God, that you allowed her to do life with this family and friends and with her Shiloh family. And we bless you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. The funeral director will come at this time. We're ready to leave this place. Graveside services will take place at Southern Memorial Gardens. You are invited to come and share with the family in the graveside services. May we stand together, please.
can take the pain, the heartaches it brings, the comforts in knowing I'll soon be Yeah. 